Welcome, uh, my name is Sean. I'm here to teach you some basic uh, audio editing, uh, I guess audio production in general. Um, what this is is Sonar X2. Um, I use this as the sample um, for a recording situation or a DAW, digital audio workstation. Uh, a lot of other programs are going to be similar. And there, there's going to be you know, a lot of similarities from one program to the next. There's going to be differences, but more or less these basic things should hold more or less true in any DAW you go to. Uh, but I'm using Sonar X2 as an example. It's the newest version of Sonar um, as of it's January 2013. So um, right now it's the newest. Um, it's pretty cool. My, I also mentioned, is also optimized for touch screens. So those of you who are running Windows 8, it should function just fine on it, um, according to Sonar's website, uh, cakewalk.com. Um, I haven't tested it. This is a Windows 7 machine, so I can verify it on that, but I haven't tested on Windows 8, but it's supposed to be optimized for it. All right, let's get into it. This is your home screen. You will find... Um, when you load up the program, uh, I'm going to create a new project here. I'm going to call it uh, Sample. Okay, and here's your basic setup your console view right here, which is basically for mixing and that type of thing. Um, right now, we're not going to get too far into that yet, but uh, I'll touch base with it in a second. I'm gonna, I just dropped it down, the collapsed it down with this button over here in the bottom right clops up and down. Over here is uh, basically some EQ and compressor and other stuff that you'll find within your console view. That's just a quicker access point. I don't use it, but it's there. Uh, you also have your track and clip and information as well. Alright, so move that over. Over here is your effects bin, your sense instruments, your rewire, all that information is over here on your right hand side of the screen. Um, at some point I'll go over this. This is a qu quick way to drag and drop effects into uh, different tracks. Uh, you can also do it in the console view and the track view as well. It's just, uh, if I think they did this for the touch uh, aspect, I believe. It looks like it. It seems like a new feature. I'm going to collapse that. Okay, now here's your track view. This is your basic, your, your meat and potatoes of your work area, uh, especially before you get into, as you're doing your recording and your editing. Once you get into your mixing, you can go into your console and the other effects bin. But right here is your basics. Um, right now, I'm going to use a, a sample project that my my 11 year old daughter is working on. Uh, she did a cover of an Eminem song, so we're just going to use some clips from that as an example um, to show you. Uh, first off, I'm going to insert audio track here. So I have track one. I'm going to name this Beat. Because that's the first thing. Uh, or Beats, or whatever. That's the beat. Uh, it's the first thing I'm going to drop down into it. So it's, the track is, the, the cursor is at the beginning of the track. So first I'm going to go to File, Import, Audio. Click on the MM Beat. When I'm gone, it's going to import right here. So, this thing drops it in. You see all the waveform there. Boom. Okay. I happen to know the BPM of this. It's 75 beats per minute. So, I'm going to enter that in the screen, and it will sync up with the, the uh, measures and beats and all that stuff. All that stuff will be synced up according correctly. Very important, actually, to do that when you if you can. Uh... Even if you have to tap it out and figure out the BPM, or if you don't know it, you should know if you're making an instrumental or you're getting an instrumental from somewhere, you should try your best to find out what the BPM is because it will make editing later much easier for you. Trust me. Okay, I'm going to go over some of the basics here if you don't know uh, to cover the, that base first. Right here, you have your play button so you can play the track. Cool. See it playing. Um, this is just the instrumental. Then uh, you have your fast forward. You hold that down. Blah blah. 
Okay, pause. Back up, stop. Okay, bring it all the way back. There's a quick scroll through here. Click back to go back. Also, shortcut to go back is the W key. Um, just a quick handy thing. Also, if you want shortcuts, let me give you this real quick here. Go to your preferences. Go down to the bottom. Maybe scroll down here. Go down to keyboard shortcuts. This screen will pop up here. Has all the keys here. You click on it. You can tell what it's assigned to. You can also change these things to do it. And it has all these different sections in here. I wouldn't change anything until you're at least familiar with this stuff. Um, you can even set up shortcuts on MIDI controllers. So if you have a keyboard or you have some other MIDI device that you can assign stuff, you can set up shortcuts there as well. Great tool. Anyway, cancel all that. All right, so we have this. I'm going to go ahead and insert another track. This is also where you can insert MIDI tracks, folders. You can delete tracks. You can also some more shortcut things from you archive solo that type of thing uh, you can view your piano roll the other stuff here we're keeping it basic for right now insert audio their audio track I'm gonna call this lead one okay it's on the track this cursor is synced all the way back to the beginning because I want to make sure that's where it at since this is already a pre-recorded project that's where it needs to be because I exported them as individual tracks to show you an example. Click on lead one, open that up. Importing audio stream. All right, it's all there. Show you. Not bad for 11 year old. All right. Now, uh, here's your mute track, uh, mute your solo, your rec uh, arm record. So if you want to record a track, you would hit this button here, and it'll arm the track. At which point you can either hit this up here or hit the R key on your keyboard, and that'll record the track. Uh, if it's not pre-set up, you want to go into your ins and outs first, and make sure the in is set to the correct channel. On my system, it would be this. Uh, that would be the one I have it plugged into. Depending on how many... Uh, your, how many inputs and outputs your sound card has a whole you know I've had systems with you know 24 inputs so you got to make sure you have the right input selected um, it's a great tool because you can set up say recording drums or recording whatever something you know orchestra maybe you have your laptop there and you have 24 tracks of audio you can set up a whole bunch of channels to record on a whole bunch of different mics simultaneously and record them all simultaneously great tool in this case we're just recording one vocal so we just need to do one track at a time uh, your output is right here this is set up to the master uh, channel which is, if I go down to the console view here which is right here and that master channel is set up to the output of the sound card makes sense I can change my inputs and outputs to track them to whatever channels, buses I want to do through here in this section. I also have your sends down here. Push plus, I can create a send to some bus if I want to and have the amount of input and output, all that fun stuff. All right, so that's more or less the basics of this. Um, there's a metronome, which I believe I go into references uh, I almost forgot oh, where it's at I was turning over oh, here it is right in my eye right in my, right my face I personally don't like to have it on while recording so I like to tell people where it is if I go back in the preferences go down to settings and, and go in this project area where metronome is I can have a metronome while I'm playing back or while it's recording I turn off if you're recording like something from scratch say uh, some instrument or vo acapella or something you don't have an instrumental to go off of it's not a bad thing because then you can at least set up your BPM and be on time so there's an option here for that um, and then just hit apply and then it'll be set um, and here's also a shortcut for it as well right there right next to the timing the time section here 
metronome settings. Okay, so that's the basics of how how you can record and uh, everything. Once you have it recorded, you can go to file and you can export it, your audio here. Uh, your wave and mp3 and all that stuff um, that's I'm going to conclude the first video but this is basically this is the basics um, also your snap to grid is right here I forgot to mention that so if you want to snap it to quarter beats or whatever you want to do you can do that here anyway so this is the end of the first video uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if there's any topics specifically around recording audio engineering that I haven't covered, that you didn't see in any of the videos, go ahead and mention it in the comments or send me a message. Uh, just or better yet, just have it, leave me in the comments, and um, I'll try to do a video on, specifically on that. I'm gonna do a lot more videos on different aspects of this. So, like I said, hit the subscribe button, stay tuned. I'm gonna make a lot more videos for uh, your learning pleasure. And uh, good luck to everyone who's out there just starting to record and people who've been doing it for a while. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.